Hello, general science students, and welcome to our video lesson over the composition of matter. Now, you may be saying, hold up, Mr. Williams, wait a second, we've already been talking about some of this stuff, and yes, you are correct to a certain extent, okay? Uh, this video, we're going to lay out some, some certain things from 15.1 that we've yet to cover. Uh, we already know some of the basics uh, regarding the atom and uh, particles as we looked at the kinetic theory um, over the past couple lessons here regarding the states of matter. So we're going to get and dive into a little bit more um, behind these, uh, these particles and the different types of uh, objects that make up that word, that definition of, for a particle. Okay, so we're going to look more closely at atoms and elements and mixtures and compounds. And mixtures and compounds are what we're going to focus a lot with this lesson today. So interview here, all right, um, matter. Anything that takes up space and has mass. Can't get that concept across enough. And uh, matter can either be a mixture of many different substances or it could be completely pure. Okay, and if we're talking about a pure substance here, we're looking at matter that has an absolute fixed composition. Okay, matter that has a fixed composition. So uh, they could be elements, pure elements like pure aluminum. Um, they could be pure elements like uh, gold, silver, oxygen, argon, krypton, all those different types of uh, elements uh, could be considered pure substances, all right, matter in its pure state. But uh, there's also some compounds, uh, which are um, entities or things that are two different elements put together or two or more different elements put together. So stuff like water could be considered a pure substance, salt could be considered a pure substance. Um, glucose, the simplest of sugars, C6, H12, O6, could be considered a pure substance, and they're all compounds, okay? Um, so matter, it's either a pure substance, like the examples we just gave, or it is a mixture, okay? Those pure substances mixed with one another. Now, uh, we've talked about this. All substances are built from atoms, okay? And an atom all right, many of the same atoms kind of put together, that's what we consider an element. All right, so elements are substances that are made up of atoms that are alike. And compounds are substances, just to find this a little bit ago, that have two or more elements chemically combined in a fixed proportion. Okay, so H2O, two hydrogen, one oxygen, all the time. That's a compound, okay? C6H12O6, six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, six oxygen atoms. That ratio holds constant regardless how many of those atoms you have present in that glucose um, object, all right? Okay, take a little breather here. Just got done reviewing what matter is. We just got done looking at what a pure substance is, to, uh, is what is considered to be um, kind of officially defined atoms and elements and compounds. Uh, now we're looking at the second major group that uh, matter can be. Matter can be, again, pure substances or it can be mixtures, all right? It can exist in the states of solid liquids, gases, or plasma, okay? So we're getting out of the states of matter right now. We're getting into the, the uh, types, if you will, or the groupings. So just got done with the pure substances, all right? Elements and compounds. Now we're going to come over here to mixtures. And mixtures, um, the definition is matter that's composed of two or more substances, that can be separated by physical means. Not chemical means, but by physical means. So you can physically separate the two or more substances that make up uh, that matter. Um, a heterogeneous mixture, say it after me, heterogeneous mixture uh, composed of, is composed of different materials that remain distinctly different from one another. So you can actually tell that there's different substances making up that mixture. Good examples here would be like salad dressing, um, a piece of granite rock, uh, t-shirts, all right? Uh, and it can include both solids, liquids. It can be just a solid, like a t-shirt, or it could be just a liquid, all right? Or it could be both of them kind of mixed together. Um, suspensions are another type of uh, heterogeneous mixture, and it's made up of uh, liquids and solid particles, and it's as the solid particles settle, so kind of like muddy water that you might find in a river, a stream, or a pond. And the last type of mixture that's a heterogeneous mixture we're going to look at is a colloid, all right, where the particles never settle. They always stay floating around and moving around inside that liquid, okay? For instance, gelatin. 
Jello would be a, a colloid. Um, fog would also be considered a colloid, and I'm not going to tell you why. Ask me in class, all right? That'd be a good one to ask about. Um, one way to know if it's a colloid is by observing if it has the Tyndall effect, which means if you shine a beam of light into that piece of matter, all right, you can actually see the light passing through the material, okay? So it's not like you uh, see the light going into it and see the light coming out. You actually see the beam of light passing through that material. Homogeneous mixtures are mixtures that remain constantly, constant and uniformly mixed, okay? So when you mix up these two different substances, two or more different substances in their container or in the environment, um, you can't tell that it's a mixture. You can't really tell that there's two or more substances composing it, all righty? Um, they're so small that usually you cannot even see them with a microscope, in fact. Uh, some good examples here, all right? Soft drinks, so soda, and, and you know soda is, is water. It's uh, carbonated as well, so there's CO2 gas floating around inside of it. There's specific sugars and other additives and other flavorings floating around inside of it as well, all right? Um, tea is another homogeneous mixture. Vinegar is another homogeneous mixture. Uh, and then some of your steel alloys that you may use for uh, various types of machines. Another type of homogeneous mixture. All right. Um, solutions are probably the most popular of homogeneous mixture. A solution can be a mixture of liquids and solids, or solids and gas, or a solid and a solid, or a gas and a liquid. So pretty much the three states of matter could be matched up with each other to form what we consider a solution, all right? Probably the most popular of solutions, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, raise your hand if you've made Kool-Aid before, all right? So you pour the sugar in, you pour the water in, you pour the little flavoring packet, you stir all that up. Those are three separate things combining into one, and you really can't tell, you really can't tell that there's three separate substances making up that entire mixture, okay? It's considered a solution. So in summary here, major difference between mixtures and substances are, uh, number one, mixtures, unlike compounds, do not always contain the same proportions of the substance of which they are made, okay? We can adjust how much sugar is present inside that Kool-Aid. We can adjust how much water is present inside that Kool-Aid, okay? So it doesn't have to be fixed proportions for a mixture. For a compound, though, I can't change the amount of hydrogen that's present in that water. I can't change the amount of oxygen that's present in that water. That H2O, that holds firm, that holds steady. Second, mixtures can be physically separated, but pure substances cannot be. Okay, those elements, those compounds, can't physically separate those. Mixtures, though, we can. We can physically separate the water and the sugar from that Kool-Aid. Finally, substances have fixed compositions, and that comes back to what I was talking about with number one there. All right, so on our third major summary point here, um, H2O, that's a fixed proportion, okay? Fixed composition. Finally, you've got a great figure on page 468 in your textbook, a fantastic graphic that kind of breaks down the similarities and differences between mixtures and substances, and I recommend you check that out. That's all we got for this video lesson over the composition of matter. Um, just kind of review here, we got matter in three different states existing here on planet Earth that we really study, solids, liquids, and gases, okay? And we've got two major groups of matter, all right? The pure substances and the mixtures. See you later.